How do I play Decode? Small disclaimer, we're filming this video before the rules of the game are finalized. We have a general idea of how things are going to play out and understand the challenges that you'll be facing in Decode. Decode is the 2025-2026 FTC game challenge. In Decode, there are two large opposing structures at the back of the field. These are the goals. You'll be scoring two different colors of artifacts, green and purple, in each of these goals, creating patterns, and unlocking the gate at the front to deploy those artifacts back to the field. You'll also notice some taped off areas that'll be important for match play. Other than these large structures in the corners and along the field walls, the field is pretty wide open, so you have a lot of room to move around. This year's field is mirrored rather than rotationally symmetric, so keep that in mind when you're developing your auto plays. You'll have to have different autonomous routines for being on the Red Alliance or the Blue Alliance. The primary path robots will be taking in this game is diagonal across the field from your goal to your loading zone. Artifacts will roll out of your opponent's goal into your secret tunnel and loading zone. How far they get towards your loading zone is a little random, so keep that in mind. Because this field is so open and there's so few safe zones, you'll want to make sure you're prepared for defense from your opponents. Whether that's while you're shooting or while you're collecting, robots can interact with you and you should make sure to build your robot such that a light hit doesn't cause any damage. Make sure to protect your electronics as well so you don't lose power out there on the field. Outside the field, between the two goals opposing the audience side is the obelisk. The obelisk is a randomization element that is randomized prior to match start. On the obelisk are three April tags. Robots can scan these April tags to interpret information about the patterns you'll be making in the game. Make sure you read the rules closely to understand how robot interaction works in the secret tunnels and loading zone. You want to make sure you're not causing penalties for yourself or your opponents. An artifact is a 5-inch ball with a series of holes in it. It's plastic, it's a little bit compressible, and you'll be picking up and shooting them into the goals in this game. There are two variants of artifact, purple and green. The purple ones will come in a much larger quantity than the green ones on the field. The different colors are used to create different patterns on your classifier ramps on each goal. Many artifacts will start on the field and in your robots. Artifacts can be deployed and collected by the human player as well. Since the human player can collect artifacts from the loading zone, it allows robots to make a choice between having a floor intake to pick up balls from the ground anywhere on the field, or allowing their human player to collect them and then load them as they enter the loading zone. While artifacts generally deploy towards each loading zone, they can end up anywhere on the field. If you're careful, you may just be able to steal some from your opponent, which is a much closer distance to your goal. At any time of the match, you can hold up to three artifacts and score them in your goal. Scored artifacts will roll down through the classifier onto the lower ramp, where you can see the pattern that you've made in order that they've gone through the goal. The goal is designed such that the first ball you shoot is supposed to be the first ball that comes out, but keep in mind, depending on a number of factors with how you shoot and how your allies shoot, you may get some randomization of those elements as they're coming out. So if you really want to be careful about your pattern, you may want to decrease your rate of fire to make sure everything goes through just right. There's also a low goal on the field right up against the face of your goal. You can place balls here and they're scored at the end of the match. Pay close attention to extension limits this year. Robots can't get very wide and they can't get very tall, so dumping balls into those goals is going to be impossible. This will force your robot to shoot those balls into the air into the goal. There are two marked zones on the field from which you can launch. There's a white tape line extending to the center of the field. Anywhere closer to the goals from that line, including touching the line, you can launch your artifacts into your goal. There's a second taped off line even further back, sort of long range area that you can also launch artifacts into your goal from. On each goal, there is an April tag to assist you with aiming and ranging from those goals. Robots will be able to look at each April tag, use information to understand their distance away from it and angle to the target, and fire from even longer ranges. Keep in mind there's only one April tag per goal, so full field localization probably isn't the strategy to go with here. Keep in mind, you don't have to use the April tag to align to the goal. You can use the front face of the goal, you can aim it by eye. There are lots of ways to make your shot into the goal. A lot of backspin or too much vertical energy may cause your shot to bounce out of the goal. The goal will accept a wide range of shots, but if you build your robot in a way that you're expending a lot of energy to get that ball up there, that's not necessarily for just the path of the ball, you may find that it pops back out. The ramp below the classifier can hold up to nine artifacts. Once you've scored nine, additional artifacts will roll over top of those nine artifacts down to the loading zone anyways, and will be worth fewer points. So to maximize your score, make sure you're opening that gate frequently and allowing the artifacts to roll out. A core element of decode is decoding patterns 
given to you at the start of the game via the obelisk. You'll have to carefully coordinate with your alliance partner to make sure that your scoring patterns don't interfere with each other. Also, you'll find patterns in Endgame, where balls left on the ramp at the end of the game score you more points for being left in the pattern stated on the obelisk at the beginning of the match. In addition to the expansion constraints that are already challenging teams this year, there is an even more challenging endgame to approach when it comes to your robot design. On the field, there's a square roughly the size of just one robot. Your endgame challenge is to fit two robots in that space. Keep in mind, while you may build a small robot, your randomly assigned partner may not have. So make sure you're collaborating with other teams and how you're approaching this challenge. At the end of the day, Decode is all about scoring more points than your opponents. How you choose to do that is an important element of your strategy and you have to work with your partners and at times your opponents to understand exactly how to get the most points. Keep in mind this year there are now ranking points Then you may want to switch up your strategy during qualification rounds compared to how you might play playoffs. Make sure to read the manual before you start designing your robot and remember your most important resource this season is time. And that is how you play Decode.